We now have a way of filling the value north of a given cell, but what we need is a way of filling values to the north, east, south, and west of a given cell. To do this, we need to uh, think about where these cells are in relation to a given cell. In this instance, we're going to use the target cell. And uh, the north cell, as you may recall, is negative one rows and zero columns away from this cell, that our target cell. I have to go back one row. The cell to the east, I actually have to go forward one column. So I have to add one to the columns. But I'm in the same row, so I don't have to change rows at all. So I can just say zero rows. The south cell, I have to add a row. But I don't have to change columns. And the west cell, I have to stay in the same row, but move back a column. I'm going to take this information here and loop through it by creating another loop within the two loops I already have. And I'm going to do that by creating another array. I'm going to call this the neighboring cells array. And it's going to be structured this way. I'm going to use the defines I made earlier. So a 0 equates to north. So the 0th row of this array is going to have the values negative 1 and 0. The first row, the east row, is going to have the values 0 and 1. The second row, the south row, will be 1, comma 0. And the third row, or the west row, will be 0, comma, negative 1. To implement this in our program, what I'm going to do is create another loop right here using the variable k just because it's the next letter after i and j. I'm going to say while k is less than 4, so we will go through the four directions 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then I will increment it. So I go through the directions one by one. And then I'm going to highlight all of this code. And I'm going to hit the tab button to indent it just once. Once I have this, the next step is to create the neighboring cells array. And I'm going to do that right at the top here using the const keyword. And I'm going to create, the, the data type is going to be an integer because some of these values are going to be negative. And the array's dimensions are four rows by two columns. And I'm going to type it in this way with a few spaces just to make everything look pretty. And then I have to end it with another ellipse to match the starting ellipse here, and then a semicolon. Right now it looks pretty, but sadly if I hit Control T to try and clean everything up, it completely messes the array up. Don't worry about what it looks like, it just needs to function, which it will, as is. Now, let's go back to our solve function and change two more pieces. Instead of adding the negative 1, I am now going to add a value from the neighboring cells array. 
that corresponds to the direction, the cardinal direction that we're looking at. So if it's 0 is the north, 1 is the east. So I'm going to use k to represent that direction. And then because this is the row value, I need to look at the first value in that row, or the zeroth value. And then here I'm going to do just about the same thing. Looking at the same direction, but at the second element. Or the, yeah, it's confusing here, the zeroth and the first. Um, which corresponds to the column element in that array. Now if I plug in my Arduino and load the program, open my serial monitor and run the program, you will see some unexpected results. Uh, no longer is the target cell, does it have a zero in there? And that's because, in part because, uh, the neighboring cells have been overwritten. So what we need to do is add an if statement right here. That checks to make sure we're only over we're only writing over values that should be overwritten, namely values that are not a 250 that are a 255 Now if I upload my program and run it, you will see that the target cell remains at zero and the neighboring cells here are ones and these are twos as to be expected. But over here I'm getting threes, fours, and fives which th there's no real rhyme or reason to why this should be occurring. The reason this is happening is because when we start out our target cells a zero and the neighboring cells are assigned a value of one. But then the the loop goes on to the next cell right here where we have a one and it tries to assign a value here which it does successfully it puts a two and then it tries to assign a value over here that's outside of the maze array and so it's accessing um, values that don't exist and somehow these are showing up over here in totally incorrectly it's accessing memory in a bizarre way that's hard to that's not intuitive so what we need to do is figure out how to deal with these walls detect them and make sure that we don't write values beyond them I'm guessing that at least some of you suspect the mouse's position is having an impact on how the solve function is filling the maze array. To dispel this notion, let's go ahead and change the mouse's position. Upload the program to the Arduino. And then run it. And here you can see these values are still coming out bizarre regardless of where the mouse is located.